worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever serve. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
Psalm 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, this, this psalm really rings true uh, for me at this time. Uh, just with the uh, recent news uh, for churches and uh, uh, from our premier uh, that we're allowed to gather together at 30% capacity um, uh, for, for churches across uh, Ontario. What a welcome news. So truly, uh, this verse, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord this Sunday uh, at our regular time, 10 o'clock, uh, we will be having church here. And of course, there will be uh, restrictions that have to be made uh, around the COVID and uh, with the health uh, requirements, things like that. So we'll be uh, following those things. Uh, we will not, we do have a cap as to how many uh, can be in the building. And uh, once we reach that cap, uh, then uh, yeah, uh, we may, hopefully we don't have to turn anybody away uh, or what we might do um, uh, is definitely let our, our visitors and those that uh, uh, would not normally be here come in and maybe some of the, our regular folks uh, would say, hey, I would open up the opportunity to have somebody else here. So uh, we'll be getting word out to you at the end of this week. And uh, so uh, just keep, keep your, uh, your eyes and ears open uh, for, for some news. And I, I so look forward to being in the house of the Lord this Sunday, uh, June 14th. Uh, praise God, praise God. Just quickly from last week, and before we get into the message tonight, I just want to touch in on, on one verse. We, we had uh, talked about Psalm 91 and the fact that, uh, uh, that we can trust in the Lord and uh, he is faithful. We don't have to have any fear. And I just I want you to know today that, that we, we don't, regardless of what's going on around us, we don't have to live in fear. We should not be living in fear. Uh, yes, live in wisdom, but we should not live in fear. And uh, in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, I just want, I want to touch on these, these two verses. I refer to them uh, even as we were touching in on Psalm 91 last week. Uh, but I want to touch in on the word trust. Uh, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So rather than... than uh, uh, trusting in your your own take on things your own understanding of things uh that we would trust in the lord because a lot of times our take and understanding of things uh is limited to to the human perspective and the human uh, wisdom and the human power um, and is not uh necessarily where god sees it at, uh, as well things that we might see as being impossible, God says, hey, they are a possibility for me. So trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on to your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So the things, the places you need to be, things you're supposed to be doing, the Lord wants to direct you so that you're not messing up, you're not slipping up, you're not failing, but rather you are uh, living out the will of God for your life. And uh, I just want to touch on the word trust, which in the Hebrew is beta. And, uh, uh, and I, I mentioned four things uh, regarding that. And I just want to just quickly go over them because they are very powerful. Uh, the first part of trust has to do with our part. Uh, and that goes even with uh, trusting human beings. Uh, we have to uh, if we're going to place our trust in someone, oftentimes it's because they've earned our trust. And with God, uh, there is a, that certain aspect to it. However, God is saying, you can trust in me. And there is this thing of taking the first step to say, I will trust in the Lord. So that's our first, the first step really is, is ours. Um, after the Lord says, hey, trust in me. And so we're We'll say, yes, Lord, okay, I'm going to trust you. I don't know you. I don't know everything about you. I don't know, will you see me through this, this situation or not? But I'm going ahead. I'm going to trust in you. And 
then this is where things really start to take off. And uh, so the meaning, the continued meaning of the word then uh, means that as we place our trust in God, uh, there is a uh, change of perspective because rather than looking at the, the negative situation, the mountain, the obstacle, or whatever you may be going uh, through in your life, now you're, you're looking at God. And God, the more you get to know God, the more you realize that he is all powerful and that there is nothing uh, that is too big for God. And so there's a change of perspective that begins to well up. Now, I'm not saying that this happens all at once. There might be a, a, a little bit of time necessary uh, for that trust to grow, the faith to grow, but it does. The more that we hear the Word of God, the more that we take in the Word of God, the more that we read the Word of God, our faith begins to grow. And as we continue to move along by faith in Jesus Christ and uh, what he did for us on the cross, we begin to have a completely new perspective on life. So that's the first part, and it gets, it gets better uh, as we go along. This, the, the second part on, on God's part is that um, there's a boldness that he will give us to move forward. So confidence is necessary uh, in uh, uh, moving ahead in life, uh, but boldness is the, that, that step now that says, I'm going to take and move forward because I'm not alone. God is with me in what I have to do. So confidence is something that the state that we, or the, the mental state and, 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 and emotional state and spiritual state that, that we get as we place our trust in the Lord. But the boldness part of it is now us moving forward to do the things that we didn't think we could possibly do and to live a, a life and live in a way, regardless of what's going on around us or what's coming against us, we can be bold in moving forward. Praise God. And the last part, so uh, uh, the first part is having confidence and being confident on, uh, and there's a change of perspective. Second part is that we become bold to move forward. And the third, uh, the third part, last part, on God's part is this, is that he will keep us secure. So there's a protection in our confidence, there's a protection in our boldness in moving forward to say, I will keep you safe. So cool. So I just wanna read that again. Proverbs 3, verses five to six, it says, trust, in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths Lord I'm going to acknowledge you I'm going to give you credit I'm going to give you honor for all the things that are, are taking place and even in the negative situations Lord you will see me through you will see me through for those of you that are going through hard times especially as believers I want you that your faith would be encouraged right now, that you would know and sense the power of God in your life to see you through your situation. If you're not a believer and you're just, you're going through literal hell, it would seem, I want you to know as you place your trust in Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross, he will give you a change of heart and perspective and outlook on life that is is one of peace praise god i thank god for the peace that he gives to us and uh, it's not as this world can give anything that this world or of people and such uh, whatever cannot give the peace that god gives what an awesome thing we have well tonight i uh, the, the title is, I've been bought. And um, I, I just wanna say that the song that, that uh, was sung earlier, Josh and, and the team was, uh, was playing, Build My Life is so appropriate to uh, the, the message tonight. And I, I pray it'd be an encouragement to you uh, in these uncertain times and with so much turmoil and things going on uh, around the globe uh, in our, hey, in our province or our country, uh, to the south or in the, in the United States, a lot of things going on. But I, I want you to be encouraged today.
as you hear the word of God. Um, the song, Build My Life, talks about uh, there being a praise, a worship that goes up to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is worthy of all praise and glory and worship. And uh, so this, this phrase, I've been bought, uh, today, that does not have very good connotation. Um, uh, if, you're, if you're able to be bought off, that means that there, there's a price. You know, uh, if somebody wants you to do something or whatever, uh, hey, I just have to pay a certain amount and people will be willing to, to do it. That's, that's not really good, especially if it means uh, going against what you believe or, or uh, just, just to, to move ahead, well, hey, I can uh, get something, uh, I can be paid, I can be bought off to do something that I would not normally do or behave in a certain way that I would not normally behave. So uh, in our world today, being bought off does not have a good connotation. It does not. Uh, and today with the, the pressures, the social media and the pressures uh, that are out there, uh, today are, are extreme. What kind of person should we be as believers? And, and who, who are we before the Lord Jesus Christ? Who are we before God Almighty? And so what does it mean to be bought? You've been bought when it comes to the context of, of God. Um, so if you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn to Revelations chapter 5. And we've read this passage a number of times in the last number of months. And uh, uh, this particular uh, chapter has not happened yet. We will be there during this chapter. For those that are believers in Jesus Christ, John saw out of time that which has not taken place yet, but is, is there's an indication of what is going on in heaven uh, even at this time. But this particular thing has not happened yet. So very interesting. Uh, Isaiah 46 verse 10 talks about the God that we serve. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a God that is an amazing God that says, I know the end from the beginning. And Revelation is an indication of, of God saying, you know what? I know the end from the beginning. And even chapter 5 has not taken place yet. But let's just read it. Uh, Revelations 5 verse 1. Uh, so what does it mean to be bought? Um, it says, I, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, that would be God the Father, a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. So the scroll wrapped up with seals on it. We talked about that already. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? Who can open up this scroll? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. There was nobody worthy. So I wept much. This is John. He says, I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and to read the, scr uh, the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Who is the lion of, or, or the, lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David? Who is this uh, being? And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of, and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders, the 24 elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, the Holy Spirit, sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him, the father who sat on the throne. So the lamb, Jesus Christ, the lamb as though it had been slain, uh, takes, and this is Jesus Christ, takes the scroll from the right hand of the Father because Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. And it goes on to say, now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp 
and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. I just want you to know, can you imagine that all the prayers of the, of the saints, all of your prayers, all the prayers that we would pray are taken and they're, uh, they're in golden bowls full of, of incense. These are the prayers of the saints, our prayers before the Lord. It says, and they sang a new song. And here's the song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. I want you to know today, Jesus is worthy. Jesus is sovereign. All power, all authority is his. Today you might say, Pastor Dave, I, you know, with all that's going on, with all the, the turmoil, you would say, is God in control? God said that in the last days, before Jesus would return, before the, the, the saints would be caught up, those that are believing in Jesus Christ and followers of Jesus Christ, before they would be caught up, that the, the time would be like it is right now. We are living in the last days. And there is a time coming that we can read of in Revelations chapter 6 through 19 that have not taken place yet, but will take place a span of seven years of terrible tribulation here on this earth. And at this time, I want you to know that God is in complete control. Jesus Christ, all power and authority have been given to him because he is the Lamb of God that was slain for us. You may say, when was, was Jesus slain? 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this planet and died for us. In fact, the, the main reason that Jesus came was that to die for us. To die for us. Now it says here in verse 9, so the, the, they sang a new song. So this is a song that is being sung. And we will, we will join in with this, in this song. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You've been redeemed. You were slain. 2,000 years ago, Jesus, the Lamb of God, was slain. He was uh, uh, tortured. He was brutalized. Uh, uh, he was scourged. And uh, he was nailed to a cross, and he was hung between heaven and earth. And he, as he hung on the cross, the blood flowed from his body for six hours, from 9 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. From the time of the, the morning sacrifice to the time of the evening or sacrifice, the burnt offering, was the time that Jesus bled for us and all our sins were were put upon him all the sins of mankind from the beginning of time to the end of time all the 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 things that would as we would stand before god almighty and we will one day we will all stand before god almighty and every the all the things of our life if Jesus, if our faith is not in Jesus Christ to take care of it, all the books for, of our lives will be opened and there will be uh, uh, an accounting of every single thing that we've said and done and every thought, every intention, every motivation will be brought before God as the books are, are opened. And so the interesting thing is here, you might say, well, what is this thing about redeemed? For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. So there's this indication of, of that, that regardless of, of tribe, regardless of tongue, regardless of people or nation. So we're talking from every uh, people's group around the nation, there are people that are redeemed. You say, what does redeemed mean? 
What does the word redeemed mean? The definition of the word redeemed means to deliver from sin and its consequences by means of a sacrifice offered for the sinner. Hmm. To deliver from sin and its consequences. You might say, what are the consequences of sin? It says in Romans 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the, the, the consequence of even one sin, you may say, I'm a good person. One sin, there's, the result is uh, uh, separation from God. The conse or the, so the wages of sin is death. And this death is not physical death. We are talking spiritual death and separation, eternal separation from God, unless there is a buying of our, our sins or a buying, a redeeming of us as our faith is in Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. So to be delivered from sin and the consequences thereof by a means of a sacrifice. And so the sacrifice, it says redeemed, uh, and ha you have redeemed us. You were, you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. The sacrifice, the shedding of your blood for, for six hours it took. Jesus suffered. He's crucified on the cross. Nails through his wrists and through his, his feet was crucified so that we could have life life eternal to have all our sins taken care of so i've been bought who's bought me it is jesus christ that has bought me i say yes yes thank you for buying and taking care of my sin delivering me from the consequences of my sin which is separation from you from from god for eternity thank you lord for redeeming me thank you for buying me and, and, and taking care of the consequences on the cross. Praise God. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 13, listen to what it says there. And there's other passages that talk about this redemption, this redeeming, this buying, this purchasing of us as we believe. As we believe. It's already available to us. The gift of God is available, available to you tonight if you're not a believer it's available to you to be in right standing with God so that when the books are open regarding your life, everything's been taken care of by Jesus Christ. What a deal. What a deal. This is, a, this is the best deal you could possibly have. We've been, I've been found guilty of my sins. There's no way that I can say, well, I didn't do that. No, I've sinned. And the Lord Jesus has said, I've taken care of every single one of your sins. I've bought you with a high price. Listen to what it says in Ephesians 2 verse 11. It says, therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, so we were separated from, from God, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ. So before, and, and we'll read a little bit before these verses, but I, I want to read verses 11 to 13. It says that at that time you were without Christ. We were, we didn't have Christ to take care of us. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That was my state. There was a point in my life that I was in this condition. I was without hope. There is no hope and I was without God in this world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Let me read that again, verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ to relationship with God because we've been purchased with a price. Listen, <laughs> praise God for the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and we, we attain forgiveness of our sins, even as we confess, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've sinned. But you took care of all of my sins. You died for me. You redeemed me. You bought me. You purchased me 
with a high price. It cost you your life, Jesus. Even as all of my sins were placed upon you, past, present, future, they were all placed on you. And I, I'm at a point where I just say, God, I don't want to do anything. Lord, let, that I would not sin or continue in sin in any way. That I would stop sinning, that I would not put more on you. Because we've been bought. Listen, let's go back to the beginning of this chapter, Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1. It says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Who's the prince of the power of the air? Satan himself. And we walk according to the course of this world. Do you, are you going by the things of this world? Are you going along with the, 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 the programs, the pressures, the societal uh, 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 pressures of this world? And you, you say, I've got to go along with that? This is how we once were, but it should not be at this point as a child of God. We are alive now, and we're not being uh, uh, doing things according to Satan and what he would do, influence and, and, and entice people with. It says the, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. I don't want to be disobedient to the Lord. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as others? Is that, and especially as a believer, I, I'm, with some of the things that are going on right now, Lord, let me not go by the course of this world. Let, not, let me not be like the world in my conduct that I'm just going to conduct myself according to the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. No, it's my way. This is how it's got to be. Lord, let me do things that would be pleasing to you, that I would not be by nature a, ch a child of wrath, just as others, just like everybody else. It says, but God, listen to the, the redemption to be bought. I've been bought. I've been bought. If you're a child of God, you've been bought with a high price. Look, it says, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, you know, the, with sin. And, and, and oftentimes this sin was, was, well, it's contrary to how God would have us live. And he could have just said, you know what? That's it. You've sinned or you've sinned too much. You're done. You're finished. I want nothing to do with you. And you will spend eternity apart from me. But God in his rich mercy and love. It says made us. Even when we were dead in trespasses. Made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised, up, um, and raised us up together. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It wasn't because of how great we were and how good we were. But it was only the grace and the mercy of God. And as we had faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for us in purchasing our salvation so that we can be with God forever. We could have relation with, with God and we can be forgiven of our sins. He gives us the, his gift. It is the gift of God, the salvation, not of works, not anything we can do, lest we should boast, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. The moment we give our life to the Lord, man, he says, I've got good things for you to do. For We've been created for good works good actions, good paths, good time here on earth. Not necessarily, I'm just, I'm not saying that you won't have difficulty or you may not have battles, or you may not have temptations, but man, is it good to serve the Lord. It is so good to serve the Lord, even in the midst of, of, of pandemics, even in the midst of social unrest and, and all the different things that may be going on. I just say, thank you, Lord, that you've redeemed me. You've redeemed us from every tribe, 
every tongue, every nation, every color, doesn't matter what nationality you are, what ethnicity you are, as your faith is in Jesus Christ, he's forgiven you of your sins as you believe in him, in Jesus Christ, the one that can redeem. And he says, I've got good works. I've got good things for you do, to do, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, that his will would be accomplished in our life on this side of heaven and for all eternity. So our posi position now by faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified, the lamb of God that was slain for us, what is our position? Well, look at verse 10, Revelations 5, verse 10. And once again, this is from every tribe and tongue, every color, nationality, ethnicity, regardless of your social status in this world, regardless of where you've come from, regardless of what your past was, what you've done, you've been bought, and every single thing has been taken care of by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us 2,000 years ago. The most important event that ever took place in all history, from beginning of time to the end of time, what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross to give us life now and for eternity. Praise God. So what are we as sons and daughters as we believe in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that was slain for us? We say, yes, Lord. I, I believe that you died for me. You have purchased me with a great price. I know this and I acknowledge this. Look what it, sa it says. It says in verse 10, it says, and have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. That is still to come. We are already kings and priests unto God because we've already been purchased. I just thank God for that, that he raises us up to a position of authority as a king would have authority. And as priests, priests minister to God and also to people and to others, that we would be people of authority, the authority that God has given us, and that we would minister to God in our lives and who we are in our worship and our praise in our daily conduct, that it would be a praise and worship unto God, and that our ministry would also be to our, our neighbor, regardless of who they are. What do, Lord, let me love my neighbor as you have loved me, and as I would love you. Let, let me love my neighbor, that we would have love. Look at what the response was in heaven. And, this, and John is seeing this, and we will be there seeing this as well. It says, Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number, number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, basically saying, that, like, without number, the angels, everything, saying with a loud voice, worthy, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. We are talking worship. We are talking a worship of who Jesus Christ is, the Lamb of God that was slain. What should our response be for as we have been bought with a great price? What is our, what is our response? It should be the same thing. As, as is written here and, and is in, in heaven, that there is a praise that would go up to the Lord in who we are. Let every moment, listen, we, we've got church coming up this Sunday. Is your heart, does, is there a, a, a joy that's welling up within you about being in church? To come in and just, Lord, I have an opportunity to worship you. What's your, where, where are you at when it comes to the fact that the, the God that was part of all creation, that created, that made you, and gave you life, that you would be able to worship him and praise him? Is that what you do now? Do you look forward? Lord, God, let my life, let me, as, as the psalmist said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you looking forward to being in the house of the Lord this Sunday? 
But it's not just on a Sunday that we would praise God or worship Him, but each and every moment of our, of our lives, each and every moment of every day, that there would be a worship and a praise that goes up to Him. You may say, well, Pastor, what, what, am I supposed to be singing songs all the time, worshiping Him, praising Him? Listen, I'm not just talking about singing a song. And hey, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with singing a song or worshiping God outside of a church service, outside of us gathering together, even as, as we are alone, that there would be a song that goes up to him. But I am talking about who we are. Lord, let my conduct, let who I am, let my life, my, 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 my thoughts, not just what comes out of my mouth, but even my thoughts, my, my attitudes, my emotions, my intentions, who I am without anybody knowing me and what's going on within, within me. Let that part of me be a worship unto you. Lord, we need your help in this. We need your help in this. That we would be those that even in our thoughts and intents and motivations and emotions, even our speech, our conduct, our actions, who we are, whether we are around people or not. Lord, let my life be a praise and worship to you. Now, I just want you to know this. In verse 6, Revelations 5, verse 6, listen to this. There's something here. It says, and I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, or the Holy Spirit, sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him, the Father who sat on the throne. So we have Jesus Christ, the Lamb. We have the Holy Spirit. And we have the Father. We have a triune God here. But look what it says here. There's, there's, there's a, 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 a this triune God, this Trinity, they are acting together as one. They are in total unity. And look at this. It says, regarding the, the seven spirits of God or the Holy Spirit, it says, sent out into all the earth. Listen, you might say, Pastor, I, I mean, I don't have maybe an excitement about being in church on Sunday. Or maybe it's like, man, I've got so many things going on in my life. I've got so many turmoils. And it's like, I, I, I'm having a hard time to worship God or even in who I am and, tr and, and trying to be that person that would, and even in my thoughts, bring worship to the Lord. Can I just say this? The, the Holy Spirit is tied in to the lamb as though it had been slain. As our faith is in Jesus Christ and him crucified, the lamb of God slain for us, the Holy Spirit is sent out and will help us in who we are before the Lord. So that, and once again, this help, listen, we can, do, we can try to be good or try to worship God on our own. But God is here, the Holy Spirit desires to help us even in our worship of God, in our worship of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that was slain for us. And he wants to help you as you walk by faith each and every day in the Lamb of God slain for you and for me. Going back to the end of chapter 5, Revelations 5, verse 13. It says, And every creature which is in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, I heard saying, so all praise and worship. I, you know what? <laughs> I cannot wait to see creation worshiping the Lord. Every creature was, which is in heaven and in earth. So whether it's, it's us as human beings or whether it's the angels, cre uh, the, the, the four living creatures, the cherubims, the seraphims, we're talking about the crea all of creation 
being bringing praise and worship to God and who they are and what they are, even to the point of the animals, if you would, in the new ta uh, in the new uh, millennium or in the millennium, when Jesus actually rules this earth for a thousand years, there's going to be changes even to animals and how they conduct themselves. It'll, it'll be completely different. We talked about that a few weeks back. There's a praise and a worship that goes up. It says, I heard saying, this is what I heard them saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. There's a praise and worship that goes up. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. Can I just say this? This word, amen, it says, then the four living creatures said, amen. The word amen means, so be it. So be it. Let it be. Let there be a worship that goes up to the Lord. Amen. Can you say amen to there being a worship that goes up to the Lord Jesus Christ? You as a child of God, that you've been bought with a great price. That there would be a worship that goes up to Jesus Christ for his sacrifice for you. Listen, we do not deserve to be in the presence of God. We have sinned. We are, we are a sinful people. But the Lord has redeemed us and there's changes that can take place in our lives and do take place in our lives as we are total, totally surrender. It says here... The 24 elders fell down and worshiped him. This is a thing of, of total, in the worship, a total surrender and a total uh, acknowledgement uh, of the Lamb of God. Listen, that we would surrender our lives and our will and who we are. Lord, I surrender to you have your way in my life. One of the greatest forms of worship is a total surrender and a submission to Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God slain for us. He is so deserving of our praise. He's so deserving of our worship, even in the conduct of who we are on a day-to-day -day basis, that there would be a, a, a bending of the knee and, and a submitting to Jesus Christ as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lord, I just, I honor you. I exalt you. You know, uh, when it comes to um, uh, authorities or, or even uh, monarchies or uh, those that are kings or queens or whatever, especially in times past, there was a thing of, of kneeling before them. Part of it had to do with acknowledgement of who they were and also the submitting to the, the position they have. But the Lord is giving us an opportunity to do this willingly. And that in our lives, there, there would be a willing submission to the one that died for us, that we were undeserving, yet he died for us so that we can have life eternal, to live forever. And even on this side of heaven, to have life that is full and abundant. I just say, thank you, Lord, for the life that you've given me. Thank you, Lord, for, for saving me, for redeeming me, for buying me with a great price. I've been bought. That, you've been, that you would be bought with, by the Lord Jesus Christ as you submit to him. Praise God. Psalm 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord to come into the presence of God. Lord, I want to be in your presence. I want to lift you up. I want to exalt you. I look forward to the times of just exalting you and praising you and glorifying you with who I am because you have purchased me with a great price. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, listen, I just want to, I want to pray. If you're listening at this point and you don't know the Lord, and you, maybe you didn't realize what Jesus Christ did for you to take care of every single one of your sins. You might say, I'm, I'm not that bad a person. 
Or you might be saying, you know what? I am a terrible person. I can't, I cannot, I am so ashamed of the things that I've done. I want you to know that God loves you so much. That Jesus died for you. You could have life. All your sins taken care of and forgiven. To be forgiven. The Lord says, I've, all the books that, that would have a charge against you as your faith is in Jesus Christ, every single one of those sins taken care of by Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that was slain. He is worthy. So I want to pray with you a prayer. You might say, Pastor, what do I have to do to, to get things right? And even if you're a believer, you may say, Pastor, I'm not living the way that I should. Or maybe you, you've started off and, and you wandered away and you've, you're doing your own thing. The Lord is saying, it's time to come home. It's time to get things right. I love you. I'm coming soon. And where I am, I want you to be. I want you to be with me. And so I want to help you to get things right with the Lord. And whenever it comes to getting things right with even human beings, there's a thing of confessing, hey, listen, I've sinned. I've done wrong. And there's a thing of forgiveness. We usually would say, well, can you forgive me? Well, the, th the amazing thing about the Lord is this. When we even, as we begin to confess and acknowledge our sin to the Lord Jesus Christ, in 1 John 1 verse 9, it says that he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness even as we confess our sins. Praise God. So I want, I want to make that part. We want to acknowledge our sin. We want to acknowledge that work that Jesus Christ did, the Lamb of God slain for us 2,000 years ago. And we want to bend our knee to the Lord, regardless of whether we're coming to him for the first time or we've gone away. Or maybe you're saying at this point, as even as a believer, Lord, I'm just confessing again my surrender to you, that it would bring a worship and a praise to you as I, I bow my knee to you at this time. So we want to do that. I want to help you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I cannot believe how much you loved me and how much you love me. That you would even consider me, that you would even die for me to take all my sins upon yourself. Lord, I am a sinner. I confess that I have sinned and, and that you would even consider to take my place and, and the consequences of my sin and you would bear, bear them yourself. You would, that you would take the consequences of separation from God and death. Lord, I acknowledge, I recognize you are the Lamb of God that was slain for me that you died and that you were buried and you rose again on the third day you are king of kings and lord of lords i acknowledge who you are that you love me so much and so i surrender myself to you i submit myself to your lordship and to your love in what you did for me i just i just i just worship you and I ask you to be a part of my life, Lord, that my life would bring praise and glorifying unto you, a glorifying unto you in who I am, in my thoughts, in my intentions and motivations, and all the things that others may not even know about me. Lord, let there be a worship in those areas that nobody knows about me. When, when I'm in all alone, Lord, that my life would be a worship unto you. I need the help of your spirit. Holy Spirit, come and help me to love Jesus, to love the one that died for me. Help me, Holy Spirit, that my life would be a praise and a worship unto you. I just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So good to have you with us tonight. And uh, I'm hoping that you can make make it uh out to church on sunday morning at 10 o'clock 10 a.m so don't forget it's not 10 30 it is 10 a.m and you will want to be on time so be on time 
or come before time because <laughs> we do have a cap. We do have a cap. And um, uh, listen, if, if, if I wasn't preaching on Sunday morning, I would be saying, hey, listen, I would, I would w be willing to give my place up uh, for others to, to be here should we reach our cap. And um, so, so come on out and uh, God bless you. Have a great week. And uh, we will, there might be some missing of, of, of our studies and whatever as we go to live services uh, here at the church with a 30% uh, capacity. So come out on Wednesday, Wednesday at 7 p.m. next Wednesday, come on out. Uh, we're also looking to get some of the other things going with our, our, the youth. And I know it's the end of the, the school year. Uh, but uh, we're going to be looking into uh, getting some things up and running uh, for, uh, for the youth as well. So God bless you. Have a wonderful uh, evening yet and a wonderful day and a wonderful life as you uh, worship the Lord because of who he is and what he's done for you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.